Pier Paolo Pasolini, the filmmaker. Contradictory, Marxist, mystic, Catholic, and atheist. Pasolini, Pier Paolo Pasolini, prolific writer and poet. 26 novels and six volumes of poetry. Right, what's this crap about Pasolini? <laughs> Why the hell is uh, Antonioni going to grab the end? So listen, uh, and uh, what do you think about Antonioni then? It's a risky point I saw five times. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I saw Passion of St. Matthew according to St. John, St. Uh, Mark's, whatever, the, you know, the Pasolini thing. A piece of crap. A piece of crap. Eh, bravo. È bravo, è un buon regista molto profondo. E poi eh, che ci pensi di Fellini? Più Fellini? Di... Fellini è il più grande regista che c'è sulla faccia della terra. Ah, sì, più grande che fa più grande regista. During the last 11 years he has written and directed 15 major films, such as The Gospel according to St. Matthew, Acatoni, Mama Roma, Oedipus Rex, Theorem, Pigsty, and recently Medea starring Maria Callas. If one were able to find in Pasolini's work one constant which has followed throughout his cinematic career, it would be the stress that he has placed on death. Starting with Akatoni and following all through his films, it is a subject that he has talked about a great deal. Pasolini ha scritto una poesia circa i disordini che allora cominciavano in Italia, credo. One underlying tendency can be discerned in Pasolini's career. He lays increasing stress on the need to restore an epic and mythological dimension to life, a sense of awe and reverence to the world, a sense which he maintains the peasantry still possess, though the bourgeoisie has done all in its power to destroy it. In Rome, Italy, 1968, Pasolini wrote a poem relating to confrontations during the first large student manifestations, and in a completely surprising and unexpected way, he takes the part of the police, making a racist accusation against the students because they are the sons and daughters of the bourgeoisie. Pasolini has not been able to take a valid political viewpoint, but has on so many other occasions has expressed his own personal and subjective thoughts. All those who criticized my poem had to continually backtrack on the occasion of the death of a policeman killed either by the police, the fascists, or communists. His death brought out exactly what I had said. Power has two ways of bringing about a racist hatred against the poor. The first point, leave them poor and the poor person comes to be hated. Make them policemen and they're accused of being killers. The moment a poor person becomes a killer, he's open to racist hatred. This is horrible. We shouldn't experience this. I'm obviously against the police. It's the arm upon which every power structure is built. And a power structure always tends towards the right. I do, however, refuse to share in any type of racial hatred. Pasolini is always better when he's talking about himself. We ask an artist to tell us about himself. We don't ask him to tell us about the world. Non chiediamo a un artista che ci dica qualcosa sul mondo. Allora, io credo però che quando avrà abbandonato I believe that when he has abandoned certain preconceived notions about making stories, uh, fairy tales and explanations, then he will have a more direct rapport, almost autobiographical with the camera. Con la macchina da presa the fusion between these two great personalities, the filmmaker and the writer, will give Pasolini a new vision from which we can expect great works.
truly new and original in world cinema. Of this I am certain. Alcuni in Italia hanno criticato Pasolini. Oedipus Rex. People in Italy criticized Pasolini for not making Oedipus an intellectual because they imagined Oedipus as such. Pasolini considers this a mistake. An intellectual seeks things out, whereas Oedipus is exactly the opposite. He is innocent. Il contrasto tra la completa innocenza e la ricerca della conoscenza. That is the thing that inspired Pasolini the most in Sophocles, the contrast between total innocence and the quest for knowledge. It isn't so much the cruelty that produces crimes, but the fact that crimes are committed because people do not understand history, life, or reality. The film is very pessimistic. By the time Oedipus gets to understand, it's no use to him. Certainly, one could always play with a hypothesis that if Oedipus had not been so fatally innocent and unconscious, if he had been an intellectual and had first sought out the truth, he might have been able to alter reality. The only hope is a cultural one, to be an intellectual. Pasolini wanted the central part, which is the main body of the film, to resemble a dream. This explains the settings and the choice of costumes, and it sets the general rhythm of the film. Pasolini is basically irrational and innocent like Oedipus, and at bottom, ignorant. Pasolini met Ninetto Davoli by chance when he was making La Ricotta. Ninetto was with a whole lot of boys watching Pasolini direct the film and he noticed him at once because of his curly hair and his carefree personality. When he thought of making Uccellace e Uccellini, Pasolini decided on him and Toto without the slightest hesitation. I remember he said, do you want a part in the film? And myself replying, okay. And he said, you know, it's only a very small part, and I mean small. So I took it at that. And instead, it turned out to be a part with Toto, Italy's most famous comic. Imagine my surprise with a star like that. Of course, I accepted. And so The Hawks and the Sparrows was my first film. I was only 16 when I made it. It had little success. Maybe people didn't understand it. So after that, I started to make other films. The Streghe, Capriccio e all'Italiana, Oedipus Rex, Theorem, and many others. He's the only person I know in whom I can confide. For me, Pasolini is like a brother. <laughs> it amuses me to make films. I also have to earn some money. But the rest really doesn't interest me. I like Pierpaolo a lot. He's a very sincere person. He's a real friend. He's a type who's very easy to get along with. He gets on well with people, especially people from the slums. Alberto Moravia, one of Italy's leading writers and certainly the foremost authority on Pasolini and his works. Alberto Moravia. Pasolini Pier Paolo Pasolini is an exceptionally gifted artist. All of his work has a poetic influence. He is one of the most important poets we have in Italy today. What is his originality? In Italy, we've had for the last mm, century something which is called civic poetry, pertaining to the world of politics, culture, humanity. It has always tended towards the right, conservative and nationalistic. 
The great originality of Pasolini is that of making civic poetry tend towards the left, making a fusion between Marxism and social decadence. It has the great originality and quality of having absorbed all aspects of everyday living. The novels and the films of Pasolini resemble each other. But since Pasolini has become a filmmaker, he no longer writes novels. He makes films and writes poetry. His novels have the great merit of truthfully revealing the world of the Roman slum dweller. It is misleading to divorce Pasolini's work in the cinema from his other work, particularly his writing, poetry, novels, and criticism. Like Robert Grillet and Kluge, Pasolini was a writer before he was a film director. I must say, I still hold reservations on the possibility of the comprehension of Pasolini's films by the underdeveloped people to whom his message seems to be directed. In the cinema, Pasolini began with two or three films using the same themes as in his novels. The novels are the Ragazzi and the Violent Life. They describe the Roman slums and the films Acatone and La Ricotta are also about the slums. Pasolini also made a series of cultural films. He made films of the myths of Medea, Oedipus Rex and Jesus Christ. These are films of a man with a great sensitivity towards painting, revealing a very figurative and pictorial content. They also show great sensibility for a contemporary interpretation of the ancient myths. Pasolini's cinema is clearly in the tradition of Rossellini, Dreyer and Mitsuguchi, if only in its juxtaposition of the natural and the supernatural. I, Cesare Zavattini, having been watching the conflict for a number of years ever since Pasolini entered the world of filmmaking, a conflict between Pasolini the writer and Pasolini the filmmaker. It is a conflict in which Pasolini the filmmaker tries to reconcile with Pasolini the writer.